Hey guys, it's Warren again, part two. Last uh, one we went over the ankle complex. If you haven't listened to this that one, make sure you do that first. Um, we're going to go over the knee area, um, the dysfunctions and function of uh, the muscles around the knees, um, and uh, how to uh, fix those. All right. Um, remember though, most knee issues are due to ankle or hip problems, so um, uh, you know, the issues we're going to go around here is to help with those too. Alright, um, we're going to start off the kneecap though. Uh, I hear a lot of clients and people complain about knee pain when doing squats, lunges, um, or just bending of the knee. Uh, this is usually patella tendonitis or patella tightness um, around that kneecap area um, and your patella is right here all right and uh, if we look close we can see that where it attaches on the lower leg um, so when your quad muscles which are these right here um, are tight they tend to pull on the tendon which in turn causes inflammation and pain and then probably eventually injury all right uh, definitely lower performance uh, when you have those issues and a lot of compensations start happening in other areas which in turn is a snowball effect and causes more dysfunctions and so on so uh, it is important to get it fixed um, what we want to do just real quick uh, we have uh, your quad quadriceps um, and uh, we have outer middle and inner and you want to make sure you foam roll those properly and stretch them after you do the foam rolls to relieve the um, patella tendon okay now if you have a tracking issue that's the second issue and tracking means that your patella will as it's gliding across and your knees bending it pulls over to one side or the other and uh, this does cause issues again, um, and uh, it's due to one side being overactive. So say this side's overactive, this side being underactive, and those muscle fibers that are attached on the one side of the tendon tend to pull more, which shifts you know, uh, the patella over. Common sense stuff. So what is common sense is we went over on the ankle complex. If one side is overactive the other one isn't you do not touch the underactive side you only deal with the overactive and tight side and you want to strengthen the underactive side okay now let's go over the hamstrings and uh, there's a lot of times the issues with this area is done wrong now I'm going to kind of show you how these are set up. You have two parts of the hamstrings. You can see it comes down here, wraps around. See where it's attached to the uh, lower leg on the side. Okay. And then we have, oops, sorry about that. How this one comes down and attached to this side. All right. Now, just real quick note here you notice how this comes here attaches and then the muscle from the lower leg comes up and attaches right in the same area so you know the old song your ankle bones connected to you you know so forth it happens it's true okay everything is interrelated your calves come up above your uh, knee and your hamstrings cross and come below so they are interrelated okay now so from here the most typical issue which is the one I'm gonna go over is uh, over activation of your outer hamstring under activation and lengthening and weakening of the inner hamstring thus causing it to pull on the lower leg and externally rotate in your feet and lower leg outward okay that's going to cause bad issues with your knees and uh, typically this muscle gets tight you know people go well, why is one side get tired than the other is when your ankle is tight your foot has to lay over on it to its side 
to uh, compensate for lack of dorsiflexion, um, even your big toe not being flexible enough. All right, your foot has to lay over on its side, thus causing a shortening of this muscle, and, to have, and it has to lengthen this one. And over and over and over again, this happens and causes it to pretty much stay in that position and get worse. So, when you're stretching, you want, again, what is it? Common sense. If you want to help this, you stretch, you roll first, stretch it. You notice on the same side of the tight calf area. And we want to strengthen the inner hamstring. Again, only strengthen the inner hamstring. Um, you, you'll see it a lot. Um, a lot of times uh, when someone, I'd say 98% of the time when someone's doing a leg curl, you'll see that bottom leg and feet just flare outward. That is an overactivation of the inner ha or outer hamstring, okay, and uh, which causes bad issues, and uh, uh, it's a, a thing you don't want to happen, okay. I uh, see this a lot with youth. Um, that's why a lot of my youth uh, get uh, lower levels of injuries, um, almost to none, and uh, higher performance levels just by fixing these simple common sense issues of function if, you know if I make the motor the the 12 cylinder hitting all cylinders and instead of trying to maximize six cylinders um, it's obvious um, there's gonna be higher performance there okay um, again if you have any questions uh, contact me at my website www.wm-fitness.com check out the website uh, my blogs um, my programs, I have a lot of stuff on there. Um, uh, articles I've been in. Uh, also, uh, make sure you become a, a fan on my uh, fan page on Facebook. And uh, if you have any questions, please shoot me a message. Um, and uh, stay tuned for the next module. Y'all guys have a great day.